Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about volunteer firefighters and the wonderful difference that they make in our communities. And I have two special guests with me today. Um, to my left is John Crawford, who uh, is the deputy chief of the Osnane Fire Department, which means that you were chief a number of years ago. Correct. Right. A number of years ago. And is, when you're not the chief, then you are a deputy. Correct. So, Once right. you finish the roles as chief engineer, you automatically um, go into the roles as a deputy chief. Right, right. So they keep you busy. They yes, keep us and moving. leadership. <laughs> and also we have Dan Valentine, who is the former chief of the Cold Spring Fire Company. That's correct. Welcome, Dan. So Thanks for you us. were chief back a number of years ago. Yes. Uh, back in um, from 2004 to 2007. Right. So, let's uh, let's say, let me just kind of get a little bit of a background. Um, Dan, how did you get into volunteering as a firefighter? Um, some of my friends basically dragged me into the firehouse. Oh, well, um, that's that's good. <laughs> yeah. The, when I first started um, 22 years ago, the age limit was um, it, first it was 21, and then they reduced it to 18, and then they mm -hmm. decided to lower it even further and create a junior program at 16. Uh, so some of my older friends literally just said, hey, you know, you'd be a good firefighter, and I had no desire to be a firefighter. Mm -hmm. Were you at 16 at that I point? I was 16. You were yep. 16. So um, okay. they asked me to join and grabbed me by the arm and literally uh -huh. pulled me inside, and um, I had no desire, like I said, to want to do it. Right. And uh, after one day, I just fell in love with it and been doing it ever since. Oh, it happened that fast. Yep. Oh my goodness. So, um, actually, I must say, I've been dragged into a lot of things. So, sometimes it works yeah. out very favorable, even, even to run for the New York State Assembly. So, uh, and it can, it can work. So, John, did you have, how did you get into firefighting? I got interest in the uh, fire department through my father's earlier days. My father mm -hmm. was very active in the Austin Fire Department, and um, I was. With him, I actually grew up in, in the fire company that my dad belonged to. He um, spent a lot of time there working on the apparatus mm -hmm. uh, over the years. And um, myself, as well as my three brothers, spent a lot of time there back at uh, Independent Hose Company on mm -hmm. Camp Woods Road. Years back, they had a gymnasium upstairs where actually oh. the uh, National Guard also used that to mm -hmm. practice when they were mm -hmm. situated on Route 9A. So were you little kids, your your family, your brothers, and everybody just, you know, very very young, just going with your dad to right, the Right, that's how I, that... I first um, got involved with the, uh, or exposed to the fire uh, mm -hmm. department. It was something that um, a lot of the people did. You know, most of his friends at that time were firefighters, were involved in the fire department, his fire company, and, and um, it was like family. Mm -hmm. It was like family. Any times they had parties, uh, they were all together. And um, that was in my earlier uh, years. My dad died when I was 15 years of age. He mm -hmm. um, became sick when I was 13 and died two years later uh, from throat cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, I did um, not get that involved in the fire service. That's something that I just sort young. of let go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, years later, I, I did get involved, but I mm -hmm. feel it's in, in my blood, you know, that's right. something that. So, how many years have you, I joined, have you counted up? Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> you know, I, I had an opportunity now to review some of the history, you know, go into the archives since mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned that um, we were going to be together on this show. And yes, I joined in 1978. And um, that's a long time. You know, 36 yes, years right. ago, and and um, I've really enjoyed the service that that I've provided, and and they've allowed me to provide to our community. Right. Is there an average period of time that I mean, I go to so many fire events, and there are so many people that get that get awards for the the longevity. Um, do a lot of people once they get into fire services just end up staying there because? they do enjoy it and they're giving so much to their community is that is that what happens very positive experience I think so I think uh, the firehouse is your uh, second family mm -hmm. and you make a lot of friends and you spend a lot of time there 
Um, I think it, it, depending on when you when you join, I think we were both in similar situations where we joined at a young age. So mm -hmm. during high school years and, and right after high school into college, um, they were all my friends. So besides mm -hmm. working and after school would be at the firehouse training or just hanging out, going on calls. Um, and it, it became really part of your life. And, and as you grow up, um, mm -hmm. and get older, like myself, you get married and, and have children, it becomes more difficult um, to commit as much time. Even though you still want to, there's just not enough time in the day. So we mm -hmm. try to do what we can to still help out the firehouse. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to continue to recruit people. Mm -hmm. um, Which, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, listening to both of you, um, it used to be that people would go back to their communities where they grew up. They might go away for school, maybe they didn't, but they... they stayed more in the communities and and now we have so many people that you know come and go and you know they got a job assignment and they're you know someplace for a shorter period of time does that make it a, a little harder to recruit those people or are you finding it's just reaching out to them in a, in a different way to get them to be a part of the fire department or maybe they were with the fire department someplace else and then right. they've moved and then you recapture them is it different I that's a loaded question. Um, there's, I think there's a lot involved. I think it depends on where your fire department is located, what type of community, uh, the size. I know um, in Cold Spring, when I first joined, it was um, more people grew up there. They spent time there after college, high school. They would return mm -hmm. to Cold Spring. Um, and over the past 10, 15 years, we've seen less graduates from our high school returning mm -hmm. to Cold Spring, whether it be financial reasons or, or jobs. Um, for my graduating class, there's only three people I graduated with that still reside in the village of Cold Spring. Mm -hmm. So that, that number's kind of uh, alarming. And our community now is more of a bedroom community where people commute to the city. And that, that's kind of the mm -hmm. attraction of a, of a river town is the train. And so it makes it a little bit harder to recruit people moving into the community if they've never been a part of the fire service before. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it also has to do with not knowing what goes on inside the fire service and the fire department. There's television shows, and they, they really don't accurately portray what goes on in, in the fire department. And if people gave it a chance and came in with an open mind, I think you would see a lot more people uh, mm -hmm. volunteering their mm -hmm. time. Is, is Osnane also kind of in that situation? Osnane, or it's a huge department it, in Osnane, It's a actually. large department, one of the larger departments uh, out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was thinking also about the commuters, those mm -hmm. folks who get on the train and go in back and forth mm -hmm. to New York that really aren't aware of the services that the volunteer firefighters serve. You know, they, they have no real clue in regards to if they have a volunteer fire department or if their career mm -hmm, are paid mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. people. I've found that out over the, over the years. But, um, you know, today for people, too, it's difficult. A lot of people uh, can't contribute a lot of time. A lot of people are, are working and, and trying to uh, survive in today's uh, financial mm -hmm. uh, world. But um, fortunately, um, we have a good amount of, of volunteerism in, in the Austin mm -hmm. uh, area. There's times where uh, we can use extra help, of mm -hmm. course. You know, mm -hmm. during the daytime, people have jobs, they have mm -hmm. responsibilities. It's not that easy sometimes to leave a workplace and go out. And um, you really know um, a lot of, of, um, of the people that are going to be there during the day. Night. Right, it's and a different I, crew. In, in in my assembly district, uh, almost everybody is a volunteer firefighter. Although there are some of the volunteer uh, fire fire departments really have had to get maybe a few people that are paid just for right. dispatch or right. or whatever else. So just because of what you were saying, John, not everybody uh, is there during the day. It used to be that everybody kind of worked in town. Um, and somehow, you know, again, that's that's a change too. People, you know, are live in one town, work somewhere else. Right. Um, so, you know, that that also is is a challenge to all of you, I am sure. Sure. I mean, the fire service, even though volunteer, it's still uh, professional. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. whether you're a volunteer or a career. Um, the other th side of the coin is that the fire department is uh, is a small business. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, it has to obey by laws and, and regulations mm -hmm. by the state and the federal government. And it has to be run efficiently. And there's a lot of behind the scenes works. It's not just showing up for training and firefighting. You know, there's bills to be paid. Um, you know, the treasurer jobs, the administrative jobs. We have to have people uh, tracking training, making sure that the firefighters are keeping up their national and state training standards. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of, of work behind the scenes, and that has changed over the years. Um, right, the and that, that training, can call everything. for other types of people to join exactly. the fire department, we too, that might have those skills. We have several types of membership um, besides just firefighter. We have associate members who can, who can come to the firehouse who have no desire to get on a fire truck and respond to an emergency, mm -hmm. but they'd be willing to help clean up, help uh, cook some meals, or for some fundraisers, do office mm -hmm. work. Uh, there's lots of other jobs to do in the firehouse besides just emergency mm -hmm. response. Mm -hmm. All right. And a lot of people aren't capable of, of going out and being involved in, in firefighting. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go to that. How, how does one get trained? I, I mean, I admire everybody in the fire department. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine, uh, you know, the, the type of training and the skills that you've had to develop because it's, it's, you, you have to do a good job and, and, and you do do a good job and you protect so many people in businesses and homes and so on. But what kind of training, does that start very early when you first you, you first sign up, um, John, right. is that yes, initial it does. training? In, in, um, in our county, there's a 60-hour 60 60 class. It's called Firefighter One. That, and that's in uh, Westchester County. Yeah, and Putnam I may have something. You know, the same it's a, it's the same state same uh, right. training program. Right. and It's actually mm -hmm. um, gotten a lot more in the recent years. Um, so more hours of training. More hours of, of the first course. Oh, this is the first course. Yes. Yeah, okay. Multiple You're a courses. new firefighter. You yep. say, "Yes, I want to do this." Mm -hmm. Then you get into one of these training courses right. pretty much right to, away. Right. Enroll in one of the classes, and mm -hmm. um, right, it is run by the state. It all comes down from the state, and all the counties have to comply with the state mm -hmm. regulations, and it's changed a lot since I first started. It was called essentials back then. Yeah. The same with me. Um, mm -hmm. Now there's firefighter one, firefighter two, and other. Um, training programs that um, that the county uh, normally does through the state uh, auspices. When when I first joined, uh, like John, the, it was essentials of firefighting, and basically you took a 39-hour course, mm -hmm. and you were a firefighter, and then your department would conduct training, mm -hmm. and based on the chief's recommendation, he would say or she would say, uh, okay, you're ready to be uh, an interior firefighter, so you could put on an air pack and go inside a building and, and fight a fire. We also have exterior firefighters, which are firefighters trained but don't enter the building. Could be for various reasons. Oh, and you still reasons. have that today. That's today. We too, still have that right? today. Um, some mm -hmm. members choose not to be interior. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to go inside a burning building, mm -hmm. um, which is okay. And some can't because they may not pass a pulmonary function test mm -hmm. or a physical mm -hmm. exam that would allow them to wear an air pack. There's an annual mm -hmm. physical that people have right. to pass in order mm -hmm. to be classified as an interior firefighter. Right. So and a lot since of those early years of us uh, right. has to do with the breathing. Oh, a okay. lot of things have changed right. in firefighting since uh, over the years. A lot more regulations. A lot right. of regulations. Well, a lot, you know, I know we deal with legislation in right. Albany, right. and you all talk with us, too, mm -hmm. about there's always a legislative meeting that I go to in the spring mm -hmm. to talk about issues mm -hmm. that firefighters have. But, yes, to protect everybody with their health, Right. and so on. So you're saying that that, that is really protecting the firefighter or protecting, or protecting also, you know, what they're trying to do because if, you're, if you have some pulmonary issues, you don't want to have somebody Correct. And the, the in training the fire. is really there for, for our safety. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. if, if it wasn't there, more firefighters would be getting hurt. And fire, even though fire is fire, the mm -hmm. way we build buildings today is nowhere near as strong or the types of materials we used to use. It's, it's still as strong, but they use mm -hmm. different kind of oil-based right. products would give off a lot more mm -hmm. toxic smoke than the old wooden homes of, of old. So now standards have been increased. So oh, equipment standards. See, I would have thought, I mean, we have so many, old, in our areas, we're very old, mm -hmm. actually. There's a lot of history. Right. And so on along the Hudson River. And I thought we had a lot of old buildings with wood that would get burn down quicker. Right. But or, some of the materials that we use to make chairs and tables uh -huh. and couches are made right. of, of polycarbonate oh, yes, items, right. which give right. off more heat, 
and more toxic smoke, oh, which are more right. dangerous to firefighters. So right. uh, that's just one aspect of it. But mm -hmm. we find out mm -hmm. when firefighters get injured or even killed in a fire, that new standards come out. And even mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an 87 hour firefighter one course, it's because it has grown and, and we need to be safe. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if we were to lessen the hours to get more people into training, it would only mm -hmm. be doing a disservice to right. our people. Because we still have a right. job to do, and that, and that would be fighting a fire. And we need to do it safely and efficiently. Right. And, uh, but that so poses how, a problem for yeah, people. That, so how often do you have a fire that you really have to go inside the door? Uh, are, you know, is there a percentage of the types of fires that you have, or are, are many of them you can just be outside and be able to put out the fire, or well, is a lot involving, in, involving a structure or, or a home, residence, or business, at some point um, you will go inside. Mm -hmm. If you pull up to the scene and it's fully involved and there's no way to make an interior fire attack, mm -hmm. at some point you're going to be putting the fire out and you may have to go inside mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to overhaul or check for extension and so on. And sometimes that can be the most hazardous time because of carbon monoxide and other mm -hmm. poisonous gases that were given off during the fire. So even though the fire may be out, uh, it's still very dangerous. So um, we still need all that protection and, right. and stuff. But uh, what have you seen, John, over time with the fires? You, you mentioned, Dan had mentioned electrical wires, and I think of people that smoke in bed. Or, I mean, what are, has there been a change? What were the ones, you know, like 20 or 30 years ago? Are they different today, right. the, the well, type of fires? The construction, as Dan had mentioned, is different um, than the construction from the earlier days when, when we had... Um, you recall the Main Street fire yes, that we had in yes. 1995 right. that burnt down four of the old buildings. This is in the buildings. village, right in the heart of the village of right, Austin. Right. right. And um, the fire spread because of the construction of that old building mm -hmm, and affected mm -hmm. four, four other buildings, five mm -hmm. businesses and, and um, 12 families that, that mm -hmm. um, lost their, their residence. Mm -hmm. Those were built in like 1800s or the early, early 1900s. The early uh, 1800s. Right, yeah. That's what they were. So you never really know what you're going to be responding to. You know, mm -hmm. that was 11 o'clock in the morning, and um, I figured I'd be back in, in to my office, you know, 20 minutes later. Well, three days mm -hmm. later, I went back to... Uh, mm -hmm to my office, you know, and, and mm -hmm. um, you never know. 11 o'clock in the morning, you figure it's just an activated alarm. It's not going to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, you usually think a little differently, or I mm -hmm. did anyway, mm -hmm. that, you know, it's going to be a, a working fire, working structure fire. And we've had fatalities mm -hmm. in buildings. We've had fatalities in trucks, the old um, Route 9, the old uh, hill. Years back, mm -hmm. when, when oh, a lot of the, lot of the accidents over. on yeah. the road, and it's you know right. they or trucks tip over, yeah. and so you don't know you what's never in know there. What, and what you're responding to. Most mm -hmm. of the calls today that that I see are activated alarms, which in most cases um, aren't anything that you really have to be over. Oh, you mean it's like in. my alarm on my house that goes right. off yeah. when? But you, it do, you don't know. You right. never you know until you get there I and know. see what what's going on. Right. So yeah. it's, uh, it's unpredictable. That's, that's it, very true. It does seem that we're getting a, a variety of different calls now besides just uh, alarms of fire or, or fires. Mm -hmm. we're, like in Cold Spring, um, almost every weekend now we seem to be going to Breakneck Mountain for an injured climber, oh, or, a climber or some type of right. rope rescue mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it made it into a magazine that it was one of the best hikes on the East Coast and, and now we see Several hundreds, even a thousand people on a weekend. I love the tourists. Just, yeah, tourists just so going do you up take the mountain. equipment with you, or is that physically it's the body? It's additional so training we have to okay, do in, right. in rope rescue equipment and mm -hmm. uh, basic hiking, you know, using GPS. And mm -hmm, we bring mm -hmm. equipment up the mountain. We have to find out where they are on the trails, what their injuries are. Sometimes we have to call in a helicopter to pick them mm -hmm, off the mountain mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. use a rope to, to lower them to safety. So mm -hmm. it's we're seeing it grow. After 9-11, mm -hmm. we all had to get involved in terrorism training and mm -hmm. response training mm -hmm. and additional hazardous materials training. And right. So it's just right. more and more training that, that we have to go through. That right. seemed to have changed a lot of situations, yeah. the 9-11 event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Right. Changed right. the entire world. Well, we really admired all the firefighters yeah, who that was, from up here went down yeah. or or went down to the fire departments a little bit further toward the city mm -hmm. to help them as they went into the city. It right. was yeah, so it's really hard. Let, let's talk about some of the technology, uh, and I forgot what it's called, but but something you view, you look in, and you can kind of see through the smoke. What is, what is yeah, that the called? Cameras. <laughs> the camera. The cam but it has uh, a different yeah, name. Yeah, thermal I imaging think. camera. Thermal, thermal imaging, imaging right. camera. That's what I want. And they came out a few years ago. Right. Um, Are they good? Uh, Are they're, they? they're fantastic. Um, it doesn't replace training and, okay. and your skills, and because and it's not always there, and you can't always rely on a piece of equipment. Uh, uh -huh. It does have a battery. Right. So it all has a certain life expectancy on a call. Right. Um, our first thermal imaging camera we bought cost twenty five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to get we had to get a, a loan right. from the right. bank for a couple of years <coughs> to make payments mm -hmm. on it. Now they're uh, down, right? Oh, they're, yeah, significantly. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're yeah. still in the, the five thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. we have one on each truck. And uh, mm -hmm. firefighters are trained. It doesn't see through walls like you see on TV. Oh, um, okay. You have to physically right. be in the room, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and it does. It allows uh, you to see heat. Uh, mm -hmm. So it could be mm -hmm. a person laying on a bed, mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. or maybe a fire. Because uh, again, like TV, you can always see the fire, but in a, in a, usually in a real fire, uh, right. you just see a so lot of smoke. So we should put TV aside. What Kinda, you're saying yeah. is just yeah, it yeah. it just hypes it. It's it's Hollywood. You know, it's, it's Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. If you just watch TV and all you saw was a, a black screen for 10 minutes and right. heard people talking, you'd change the channel. So. Right. John, have you had any new equipment in Austin? I was just thinking about heights of, heights of firehouses. We, we do and replace our apparatuses every 20 years or so. Mm -hmm. Usually mm -hmm. um, the apparatuses are replaced due to different regulations and, yes, you know, structures that um, you have to consider. In, in our community, mm -hmm, they're mm -hmm. building taller building. We've had a lot of new buildings put up, as you're aware of. So over the years. right. So the taller building needs a higher in, ladder. In, in it has certain cases. Right. In certain cases, it does. Yes. Mm -hmm, right. But we're we're fortunate enough to where we can replace the equipment when when needed. And for the public to know, because I've been to a lot of inspections right. uh, with the, with the fire equipment, and they are. Every, every, there's, there's no dust, there's no dirt, there's no sand, there's, they are so clean. And, you know, and, and I think the public will see you all working, you know, in front of your fire department and cleaning on the weekends, um, you know, always cleaning that equipment. And that's how it lasts so long, right? right. If you didn't do that, mm -hmm. I, I, it's like right. my car if you don't keep getting right. it cleaned up. Um, They're well maintained and, right. and the dedication of their volunteers keeping those Mm -hmm. pieces in, in top shape. Right. And just pride. Just having pride the in pride. the department yeah. and right. keeping a neat and clean appearance. And, and you know, especially with us being on Main Street, um, mm -hmm. we get a lot of tourists and stuff. And every weekend and even every day, right. there's always kids coming to the firehouse and want to see right. the fire trucks and climb on the fire trucks. And uh, you wouldn't want them climbing around a dirty fire truck either. But, That's right. You know. well, Do you you're... have antiques in uh, Cold Spring uh, to go along with the shops? <laughs> yeah, no, no. But every so many people come up by train and car yeah, to yeah. Cold Spring on the weekends it's and just up place. and down Main Street. And you're yeah. right on Main right Street. You're right in the middle, of, right the middle of it all. Yep. Right. Kind of a Can't focal point. No. Right. So talking about pride, um, I have an opportunity, and other people do in the community, going to those firemen parades. Firemen, firewomen parades. Firefighters. Firefighter parades. Yeah. And um, they they are just so wonderful. So so tell me, John, what happens in these yeah, parades? Well, this year we had 31 units from all over in the um, Austin celebration. In the Austin Fire Department August. annual parade, mm -hmm. where we start up near um, Roosevelt School, mm -hmm. and now we've been ending up at the waterfront, which is a, a beautiful it's spot. All the way downhill. You go all, yeah, most of the, yeah. There's not That's much nice. uh, right, climbing. which is great. You know, and um, yes, we, we get down to the um, the end of the parade. We have refreshments. There's trophies. There's numerous trophies that are uh, awarded right. throughout. Right. And um, I think the community really enjoys that. You know, it's a time they can come out and see um, what Austin has, see mm -hmm. our equipment, mm -hmm. our personnel. And mm -hmm. um, we also have excellent relationships with our neighbors. Right. You know, there's a lot, you have of a lot of times that, right. that we need to use them. They need to use us for mutual aid, mm -hmm. and we work well together. And, and um, 
-hmm. Parades are fun times, you know. It's, it's a time that we can have some camaraderie. Uh, right. With and there's the competition, right? There and is. And there's yeah. competition yeah. in those parades. There is. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, so is the. I'm so glad that. I'm not competitive when I'm in a parade because as elected officials, we don't right. even have to march. No. I mean, we are not in step. You We're only have to watch a certain... And we go by the judges right. and we say, don't judge us. And, and then you stop and get on the... Um, on, on the reviewing stand. On the stand. reviewing stand. Right. But I think when you march in a parade, uh, I mean, you just, you really have to do it right. You got to be in the right, right fireman's yes. outfit. And There's judges right along the... Uh, the parade route mm -hmm, that are mm -hmm. always uh, marking you for good things or bad things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, the total score. Um, it's like our inspection. You know, the, the inspection trophy is named after my father. It's a memorial um, in memory mm -hmm. of Clinton W. Crawford. And I mentioned my dad died in 1967, but all majority of his free time was working um, on the fire apparatus. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know that's what he uh, that's what he did. That's what that was his love, mm -hmm. beyond um, you know his four kids that he was right. uh, trying to keep under control at times. And, mm -hmm. and that's a nice tribute you know, to him. The, Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. It's been going on since uh, I guess around 1970. Right. So that's certainly yeah. uh, a lot of pride. So we, Dan, we did. I I kind of said firemen and and let's go back to are women involved too in Absolutely. fire services? Absolutely. Uh, Firefighter is, is just that. We, it doesn't discriminate a man uh -huh. or woman. Um, anyone can join the, the fire department. Um, there's, there's a physical uh, that you have to pass in order to be mm -hmm. uh, an interior firefighter as well as an exterior firefighter. And mm -hmm. as long as you complete the training and, and pass the exam at the end, um, you're, you're a firefighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've seen more women join in, in, in the past. Um, we, had a lady, we, had, we still have a ladies auxiliary. Um, but uh, we do have females who are firefighters. Right. And I think you too, John, and we the do. We, fire we, we've had female members for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, I, I must say that they're uh, an attribute to our department. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, uh, they're there. They help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like everyone yeah, else does. Yeah, they work and, really hard. And, um, so the, do we need more volunteer firefighters? Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. Okay. We need young blood. Right, it's right. It's going to get involved. So we can start with, we're just kind of wrapping up, but so I'm starting on a new issue, but it seems like you've had a youth corps um, yes. going on just um, recently, right? I've been involved with fire prevention uh, mm -hmm. in the fire department since I joined. I thought it was great going into the schools and talking to the children about being safe and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then in 2002, um, we developed a, uh, a junior firefighter academy where mm -hmm. we invited children into the firehouse for a week all day and put them through what it would be like to be a, at a real firefighter academy. Mm -hmm. And over the years it's grown um, and uh, this summer we graduated 55 kids mm -hmm. um, ages 8 to 13 mm -hmm. and they learn all about Starting the fire really service. Young, right? Yeah, uh, they learn about the fire service, they learn CPR and first aid and uh, what it's like to be a firefighter because I, I do believe that people don't have any idea what goes on in the firehouse and, or they just think I could never do this. Mm -hmm. and one way is bringing the children in, and uh, they get to see what it's about. And uh, since we started, we've had about 40 children who have since graduated and be turned 16 mm -hmm. years of age have joined the fire department. And actually some of their parents have joined as well um, because they realize how important it is to their children and uh, you know, that they can be a role model um, by being in the fire department as well. Right. Uh, some have joined the ambulance corps, and some have mm -hmm. gone on to be career firefighters and police officers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some some junior firefighters actually do the Heimlich maneuver on family members. So oh, that's it's great. Uh, it's been great, a great Wonderful. fire prevention tool great. to right. go home and, and share what they learn with their parents. So they make them do fire drills at home. And, right. Uh, you can but, well, that's. Yeah. That so. is a let's let's stop there. That's a wonderful ending. I mean, there's so much that goes on in fire services. You do so much good training. You start out young, and and people can volunteer the rest of their lives. Um, you know, in a in a great great career as a as a volunteer. So I want to yeah. thank John. I want to thank, thank you, Dan, you, very very Thanks much for, for being us. here. And if there's uh, any question about what we've been talking about, just don't hesitate giving me a call at my office, 914-941-1111, or contact either one of my guests or call me and I will put you in touch with them. And uh, enjoy our volunteer firefighters in our community. Thank you very, very much.